Thank you very much for uh, turning up. Um, I'm going to start off by just talking a little bit about the program that I have set up and running at the Cancer Center at 34th Street. Uh, it's on the fourth floor. It's a nice little uh, space with uh, treatment room uh, to treat patients, and we offer acupuncture, Reiki, massage, and the other stuff that I will talk about later. But our goal is to make sure that we address patients' quality of life issue during cancer treatment as well as after cancer treatment. Uh, our mission, of course, is to serve our patients in a calm and healing environment. So on the fourth floor, it is really very quiet. I even try to uh, not have music, but I think uh, other people are going to win out. We can have nice, soft music as and when patients request it during massage or acupuncture. When I do acupuncture, uh, I generally like patients to stay with their own emotions and to be in touch with whatever sensation they're going through rather than be distracted by music. But that's just me. Uh, I am a nurse as well as a Chinese medicine practitioner. That means I have training in acupuncture as well as uh, Chinese uh, herbal medicine um, and Chinese nutrition, and the other two are Qigong and Tai Chi and massage. Okay, so what do we offer here at the um, Integrate Oncology Integrative Health Program on the fourth floor of 34th Street at the Cancer Center? Um, I thought one of the most important thing is the, um, the individual health consult. It is a structured way of looking at health and wellness, and I look through that via the lenses of Western medicine as well as Chinese medicine. Having training in both worlds, it helps. And I use the tongue a lot for, in a way, as a tool for people for self-care. Uh, at the end of it, you will get a plan as to what to do based on your health status, your interests, your most pressing health concerns, and of course, uh, what you really are interested in doing and what you can afford as well. Uh, our services is out of pocket. We do not take insurance. Um, I, do, I have two other acupuncturists who help me there. I do uh, meridian balancing acupuncture, five element acupuncture, as well as Japanese acupuncture. Other uh, acupuncturists does more or less the same thing, plus classical acupuncture. Just in case you don't know, there are so many different types of acupuncture. We offer uh, massage, full body massage, uh, as well as Reiki. Is anybody not familiar with Reiki? Okay, Reiki originated <laughs> from... Um, Japan, and it's also an energetic therapy. The practitioner will put her hands or his hands. It's a vibrational therapy, and it's facilitated by light touch. The practitioner will put her hands or his hands on the uh, energy pathways, uh, and its aim is to get your own body to self-heal. It's very difficult to explain what it feels like. However, uh, the best way to do it is to try a session. To try and explain to you what it feels like is like trying to explain to you how to ride a bicycle without actually getting on the bicycle. Um, I had one when I, uh, bef the first one I had was, was when I was still working at St. Vincent's Comprehensive Cancer Center. I was very, very tired, exhausted, in fact. The, my, one of my Reiki practitioners came in and she said, oh God, you look awful. I thought, thanks, gee, that really makes my day. <laughs> um, she said, well, my 10 o'clock is late. Why don't you have 10 minutes of Reiki with me? I said, yeah, why not? So I went, and in that area where she did Reiki, it was really rather cold. Um, and I was cold, I had my, my jacket on my, and my sweater, plus two layers of blankets. And she laid her hands on my head and then 
Gradually, she moved them to my chest, and I thought, oh, wow. The heat was going through the layers of blanket into my chest, and I felt movements, and I thought, God, is that right? It was right. And she only did about 15 minutes on me, and I got up. I really felt really rested. I don't know, I'm sure all of you at one point or another had had the experience of a good night's sleep. You know the feeling of a, the velvety feeling of a good night's sleep? Well, I felt just like that after a Reiki session. So unless you do it, you, it's very difficult to explain what it feels like. It felt something like that. Uh, we did a pre and post evaluation of, of people who've done Reiki. 95%, and we did it for eight years where I was there at St. Vincent's Comprehensive Cancer Center, about 95% of my patients uh, actually say that it helped with their anxiety as well as the pain, their pain levels. So it's great stuff. Um, we have chair massage on the fifth and sixth floor of the um, uh, infusion floors, and these are offered free of charge to our patients. And it's kind of reflexology, scalp massage, hand massage, shoulder massage. Yoga and Qigong, unfortunately, have to be uh, suspended until we get our space back from Epic. Epic is like the, the have you ever seen the film, The Pot People? They come and they take you, take over the entire town. <laughs> Epic is a bit like that. <laughs> Don't let them hear it. Uh, of course, I offer education to uh, members of the public like yourself, as well as to professionals. <coughs> okay, so that much about um, my program. I have a fantastic team of massage therapists, plus fantastic team of uh, acupuncturists, as well as Reiki practitioners. Also, of course, you know, when you call up for appointments, you have to have a great um, assistant. I have a excellent assistant, and her name is May. I just want to acknowledge that. She's very, very good. Okay, let's move on without much ado to uh, five elements and five seasons. So people often ask me, five seasons? What are the five seasons? There are only four seasons, but we have to be different. So the f five seasons are the summer, late summer, which is about now, which really is not the end of the summer, and yet it's really not quite spring, uh, fall. So we kind of fall between uh, the two. Um, and then winter and spring, which we are familiar with. So the only new thing is the late summer. In Chinese medicine, each season has its own organ. And each organ has its own taste, color, voice, smell. Um, in the West, we have Freud, we have Jung. In Chinese medicine, we have five elements. And it's really uh, Chinese medicine attempt to understand how we function physically, as well as psychologically, emotionally, and spiritually. So this is really an attempt to do that, and that's why a lot of people don't really know that through acupuncture you can also help heal emotionally, psychologically, and um, spiritually. It's a very hard work. I can assure you that when I work with patients on that level, it's different acupuncture is much more transformative rather than restorative uh, work. So. In the summer, the organ related to it, oh, backtrack a little bit. When I talk about heart, stomach, spleen, and all the organs that I might be referring to, please remember in this hall, this is like through the lens of Chinese medicine. Don't go running out, oh, she says there's something wrong with my heart and go to see your cardiologist because I say, oh, you have some heart fire or something. So please always remember that it doesn't always correlate to um, the heart is your physical heart or your stomach is your physical stomach, okay? So if you're not sure, 
uh, at the end of it, send me a question and I will try and clarify things for you. So in the summer, the organ is the heart. Um, and of course, the notion of yin and yang is actually, actually underpins the entire Chinese culture. So without that, you can't see the bright. So it's as simple as that, yin and yang. And so the yang organ is the small intestine and the uh, yin organ is the heart. But I'm going to focus this evening on late summer and the, the earth season. And the organ related to it is the spleen and stomach. Translated loosely is your digestive system. Here's a diagrammatic representation. As you, it's not very big um, letters, but the emotions related to, to the heart is joy. Um, emotions related to spleen and stomach is when people worry a, a lot. They think that the mind is going round and round with the same issue. And so I'm not going to cover the others because uh, sometime in the year, I will. In the spring, I actually talked about the wood element and the emotions related to it is anger, frustration. It's really a stress management. Um, okay, here are the, um, the earth element and its associations in letters. So again, the organ is spleen and stomach, i.e. a digestive system. Um, and the emotion related to it is being sympath sympathetic or being empathic to people. And the other one is worry or overthinking. The taste related to the earth season is sweet. And the color is yellow. And the, the spiritual side of the earth is yi, which translated loosely as intention. Um, this has a lot of, all these have a lot of bearings to how we uh, work with patients. Um, it doesn't seem very important, but it is. I can assure you that. So what does uh, the earth help us? Uh, so also backtracking a little bit, none of us is just one element. So you could have a, most people have one dominant element, which, for example, if you and uh, your dominant element is earth, usually the person. So uh, how this is important for me from the clinical perspective and for you from your perspective, if you come to see me as patient, is that if you are um, generally kind of roundish, in your physique, your face is rather round, uh, slightly yellow tinge to your uh, facial complexion, and a nice sing-song voice. That person generally falls into the earth element. But then you thought, wow, but there are only five elements. Does that mean there are only five types? No, wrong because you can have other um, elements mixed into it. Some people could be an earth, some people could be earth dominant, and then wood, and then some fire and some water. This is just to make show you that there are many combinations of personality, as you can see here, right? Not just one type. So the earth element is very important because the earth element, the late uh, summer is really about the harvest time. Uh, it enables us to to be nourished, to know how to be nourished on a physical, emotional, and psychological level. So the food we eat will nourish us not only uh, well, well on all those levels. And it's not only on the physical level, so emotionally, our experience, how do we digest our experience? How do we assimilate those experiences so that it becomes all part of us? This is so important um, from a kind of personal growth perspective and also, uh, and also how you relate to yourself um, and how, to, how do I 
best look after myself, and these are important issues. And the earth element enables us to know truly, truly what nourish, what would nourish us most, and what would not nourish us, and therefore what to avoid and what not to to avoid. Uh, importantly, it helps us balance between nurturing ourselves with caring for others. Now, for me, who is in the healthcare field, I have to learn to take care of myself very, very well. Otherwise, I would not be able to take care of my patients. So it's not only people in the healthcare field, it's also uh, uh, people like you um, here, every one of you, at some point or another, you are in a relationship, whether it's a, a significant other or, or your child or your mother or your sister, sometimes you become a carer. And you have to be careful about how, how do I best nourish and nurture myself so that I can give my best to the person I'm taking care of. How do I best nourish uh, myself so that I don't feel resentment? So I'm not going in there and say, oh, God, not her again. You don't want that. You want to be able to feel that. I feel nourished, I feel balanced, and I am able to take care of myself, and therefore I can give you my best. I always follow that maxim, by the way. Okay. Earth's emotions, worry and sympathy. In Chinese medicine, we talk, talk about, oh, I'm so worried about things. It binds your qi and it causes stagnation. You might be sitting there and think, well, so what stagnation? What does that mean? In Chinese medicine, if there's stagnation, uh, it creates heat, nothing moves. It's the beginning of a lot of health issues. One example that we see a lot uh, in these modern days is what we call liver qi stagnation. Remember I mentioned earlier about liver qi, the liver organ, not the Western liver, okay? From the Chinese medicine perspective, liver organ uh, is responsible for anger and frustration and dealing with day-to-day -day stressful events in life. So if you're always uh, angry, walking around, <coughs> and frustrated, the organ in, uh, the energetically speaking, the liver organ cannot move the chi, so it gets stuck. I'm going to step out here, if you can't hear me, and energy gets stuck here, and from here, Translated loosely, liver chi stagnation is really uh, diaphragmatic constraint. So when you have that, you feel like you're not being able, not able to take a deep breath in. Even if you go, you feel like you're not getting enough air. So chi stagnation does cause problems. And if the chi stagnation is long standing, it can create heat and it can then cause a lot of issues with digestive. Uh, the liver being the neighbor to the, to the digestive system will say, hey, you, get some of my problems. And you end up with uh, all sorts of digestive system uh, issues like reflux, uh, bloating, diarrhea, uh, what we call also plump pit chi, where your throat feels like it's tight and not able to speak properly. So the so what is that we do not want your chi to get stagnant. When you are angry, find a way to express it. Don't hold it all in, right? Okay. So, and when you worry too much, it causes stagnation in your digestive system and your digestive system will suffer. And a lot of people are worried about the nutrition and you know if you are worried all the time, it will affect the, 
the integrity of your digestive system. And no matter how well you eat, if you always have this uh, feeling of uh, worry and anger, the food is not going to get absorbed as well as if you are eating relaxed and you are not always worried about things. So uh, the emotion of sympathy or empathy, um, in the best of both worlds, you should be able to have just enough sympathy for yourself and for others so that it's spread out easily and equally and things are running smoothly. However, when your earth element is not in balance, you end up being either obsessively caring about yourself, then you lose all your friends very quickly because they say, oh, here she comes, run. Or here he comes, run, because all he wants to do is talk about himself and all he wants to take care of is, is his needs and nobody else. So you don't want that to happen to yourself. Uh, you want some for yourself, some sympathy for your friends and significant other and other people. So that is not kind of a, a scale that is not uh, totally out of balance. Uh, the earth spirit is called the Yi. Um, when I first started doing yoga, the yoga teacher used to say, the intention... And I, well, I don't know what she's talking about. And then when I went to Chinese medicine school, when we put the needles, our teachers used to say, remember to place your air tension and your intention to what you're working with, the needles. For a long time, until I came across, uh, learned more about um, the yi, it's really about or have you ever heard you, your I've said it, it really comes from the heart. So the yi is that, things that come from your heart. It gives meaning, um, a word is a word, but, but unless it comes from the heart, it has less meaning. So the yi gives meaning to that word, and that yi comes from the heart, and that is the heart space that we often talk about. The yi also gives us the, our ability to focus. How often do we have, do, do, have I come across patients who say, oh, oh, well, you know, I feel that something isn't quite right. I can't focus and I can't think. I cannot concentrate. My thoughts are all muddled. Um, then I kind of have a sense that, okay, let's look at the earth element. Let's look at what is going on here. So hence, these are important clues for me to follow, to sniff around, to see where where I go to and how do I treat this patient. So uh, not, of a, uh, not my drawing. <laughs> that is the heart space in the middle. And that is where in Chinese medicine, your yi reside. Uh, at night, it goes back there to rest. And your shen, which is the spirit of the heart. The, the heart is the emperor of emotions. And it's so important, it has a bodyguard. And it comes back also to rest in the heart space. So, I often advise patients, um, please do not drink a lot of ice water. Please do not eat a lot of uh, food cold food, not just cold uh, in temperature, but energetically speaking. They look at me, why? Why can't I have ice water? I have a lady who was drinking about seven glasses of ice water and her pulse was just showing it. So this is why uh, you need to drink room temperature, uh, unless it's very, very hot. So the, remember the stomach and the spleen is part of the organ that is associated with the earth element. And the stomach is the yang uh, aspect of the, uh, the partner. The uh, yin one is the spleen. I will talk about that later. So your stomach is like a cooking pot. 
when you chew and you swallow, the food goes into the stomach, and the stomach has to do all the heavy lifting. Now then, if you're all, and it needs heat to cook your food, right? I'm sure all of you here at one point or another has done some cooking, yes? So go back tonight, put a pot of uh, water on the stove, put an egg in there, and try and boil your egg. Every, every time it heats, water t heats up, pour some cold water in. Every time the water heats up, pour cold water in. And it will take a long time for that egg to cook. So similarly, if you are eating your meals, and every time you eat, you drink cold water, or your food is always a salad and nothing else, but cold food, cold food, cold food, temperature-wise and energetically speaking, then it's going to take a long time for your digestive system to work. It will be a very lazy stomach. You will end up finding that, well, your digestive system is just not optimized. And no matter how expensive food you eat, you're not going to absorb that. So that's why I, in Chinese medicine, we really... Um, try to suggest to people, please do not eat a lot of cold food. Of course, if you, there's always exception. If you are, if I look at your tongue and your tongue is really red, I might give in a little bit and say, okay, you can have some energetically cold food. Uh, so that's why the tongue diagnosis is very important. So these are general rules, not specific to everybody, okay? So um, the earth, again, the stomach and the... Sp yes? Is there a nasty uh, general, gen a general advice, okay? We do not... I do not advise people to drink cold water all day long and nothing else like a patient of mine who drank a lot, like seven glasses of ice water every day. Uh, so it's a general uh, advice, but of course, if you want a glass of cold water on a very hot day, it's not the end of the world. Um, so, as I mentioned before, the stomach and the spleen is like, it is your digestive tract. Uh, it receives, it breaks down the food that is the stomach, which is like your, uh, like a cooking pot. Um, and the spleen, which is a, a, a big misnomer, or I should say loss in translation. Um, borrowing the title of the film, loss in translation, is really not the, the spleen. I had a lady who asked the question, what about the spleen in uh, certain types of cancer that got uh, enlarged? I said, okay, remember what I say, I'm not talking about the spleen. It's really, I think, the Chinese medicine text is really referring to the pancreas. But we are stuck with the spleen, so it's going to be called spleen. You could call it anything else, but we're stuck with spleen. So spleen it will be. So the spleen is... Uh, well, the stomach breaks the food down and it's, the spleen sends food. It's like the messenger sends food, like God's will. God, with God's love, we will deliver. It delivers it to all different parts of the body. All right. Now, if you are asleep, wake up now. Um, when do I know my earth element is out of balance? Um, here are some of the physical manifestations, by no means uh, all of them. I pick the most common that I see at my clinic. I've been treating patients. So if you feel like <sighs> you want to sleep after a meal, we say that you have spleen chi deficiency. You don't have... Uh, the stomach managed to break down the food, but the spleen didn't have the energy to deliver it to the people who need it. So there's the spleen chi deficiency. Or uh, if you're irritable after meals, uh, many of us 
have one time or another suffered from bloating, flatulence, and reflux, uh, that could also mean that your digestive system is really not at its optimum. Uh, if you have diarrhea, alternating with constipation, now I'm not saying that um, feces are nice smelling, but it shouldn't be foul smelling. Uh, and if it is, there is something you need to address. If it is very foul smelling and it comes out like cow pad, you know, I'm not embarrassed talking about stew, so excuse me, <laughs> I'm a nurse, and Chinese medicine also plays a lot of emphasis on your stew and your, and your, your poop and your pee, and what you eat, and your body temperature. So if your poop is like cow pad, take a look at it next time you go and it has really foul smelling, then you know there's a lot of heat in your digestive system. Somebody asked me about inflammation. Chinese medicine doesn't have the concept of inflammation, but we do have a very powerful concept of heat. So if you have a lot of heat, that cow pet sticky looking stew is dampness. So if you heat and damp, that's not good news. Uh, in terms of optimizing your nutritional status and what you're um, optimizing your GI tract, okay? Um, I'm sure if I, I won't ask you, but I'm sure if I ask you to raise hands, how many people have sugar craving? I think maybe 95% of you. I don't know, but I'm not going to ask a show of hands. Um, if you have gum problems, and not many people know that they have, uh, if you have bad breath, uh, I think most people don't know that. And if your friends tell you have breath, bad breath, don't be mad at your friend. He or she is your best friend. Nobody will tell you that. In fact, you should take that her number or his number down, write down the name and telephone number and never let him or her go because she's your best friend. If you have bad breath, you lose friends very quickly. And if you have a lot of swollen gum and infected gum, it usually means that you have a, your digestive system is really compromised. Uh, other symptoms that come with it is uh, you eat, you don't feel satisfied. Or people will starve themselves in order to lose weight and not in an appropriate way. They, to, you know, to starve themselves, and then the body is so starved for food, they go big binge. Uh, so poor relationships with food indicates that your um, earth element needs to be like a car that is not working so well. You need the mechanic to tune it, to fine tune it. And if you walk around uh, like you have really heavy limbs, then you have dampness. Your body is not transforming the fluid and your earth element is very soggy. Um, or you, you have ap such a big appetite, you can eat and eat and eat and eat, but we call you have stomach fire. So again, your digestive system is compromised when you have that. Moving on. Uh, one of my favorite topic, look at this tongue. What do you see? Very red, crack in the middle, dry. The side is lifted up. Is that the right word for it? But that's the best word I have for now. When I see a tongue like this, uh, redness is heat. When I look at tongue, it is like giving me a window to your digestive system. It is like I am the little camera that went into your, your guts and have a good look. So it gives me a sense of the texture of the inside. So this guy's tongue tells me that, look at the landscape there. You see up there, the landscape is cracked, dry, uh, this guy is very yin deficient. So this is like a, uh, a 
drought season. There's no fluid, and in the land, if it rains, it will get soaked up again. But when someone is very yin deficient, drinking a lot of water would not help you. This person will have a lot of thirst. Uh, drinking a lot of fluid doesn't help. You need Chinese herbal medicine to generate the yin to help uh, address the issue. Now, this internal landscape of this tongue, now this tongue is a sharp contrast to the previous tongue. This one is flabby. Uh, for sure, uh, if I was looking at the tongue now, it would be quivering. There's, there's a lot of qi deficiency here. And because it's puffy, it shows me that the internal landscape of this person is like the landscape there. It's just rain and rain and rain, and the ground is really soggy. Now, p people who are very earth element, very big tendency to this issue, soggy, dampness. So what happens when you are out of balance in an emotional, spiritual sense? Remember our friend, the yi? So if your yi is out of balance, you have fuzzy, muddled thinking, you can't, you don't know what you are doing, your life lack, lacks purpose and intention. Um, you're not able to quite understand what is going on around you. Um, not feeling grounded, you're not getting what you need emotionally to feel nurtured. You don't know where to get it, how to get it. Uh, you're not getting it from your husband. You're not getting it from your mother or your significant other or your friends. You just feel kind of lost. Or you are obsessively caring about other people. And you forgot about yourself. Now, this is not good news because if you do that, very often there's resentment. And then you end up gritting your teeth and, God, what does she want again? I can't do this anymore. And yet you continue to do it. And it shows that your yi is really out of balance. Or you do the opposite. You say, well, to help with everybody. In fact, the person who does it actually doesn't say to help to everybody. They actually don't really totally uh, realize that they are doing it. There's me and me. What's the word? I, me, and myself only. So you find, I see some people who are like that, and when this happens, uh, as I say, you lose some friends rather quickly, relatives and, and, and significant other. So part two, um, how do I know that I am doing okay? So these are the questions to ask yourself. How am I doing? What am I doing? After meals, do I have bloating? Do I have reflux? Uh, do I have, am I very gassy? Uh, if you are, make a mental note or a note in there so that you, well, you probably know. Do I go to the bathroom on a regular basis? Is, am I constipated? Am I, do I have loose stool? Is my stool, uh, undigested. Sometimes when I ask my patients, I say, I don't know, I don't look at it. I said, well, new fascination in your life. Look at your stool. <laughs> and, and you will see. Now, when it comes to smell, you don't have to do anything. It will hit you in the nose if it is that offensive. Uh, these are important things to know about your digestive system. And they are very, very important signs and symptoms to know that your earth, earth element is not functioning as it should be. Uh, cravings, I mean, uncontrollable cravings for sugar. I have to have a chocolate. When I was uh, doing my degree in psychology at Sussex University, I met a lady, a fellow student from Denmark, and she said, I have to have my chocolate. I look at her, I say, what do you mean you have to have your chocolate? Well, in the morning when I wake up, I have a chocolate bar. By nighttime when I go to bed, I would have had about five bars of chocolate. My eyes popped out, I said, wow. 
if I eat five bars a year, that's a lot. And she said, you don't eat chocolate? I said, not really, it's not in my culture. But maybe I should try. There must be something in there. <laughs> now I found out it is really quite nice. <laughs> Especially the dark chocolates. Okay, so also if you have poor relationship with food, i.e. you starve yourself and then you binge, that's not good relationship with food. You should eat regularly, small amount, eat slowly, etc. Uh, do I have heavy sensations in my body? And that kind of conjure up uh, an advertisement when I was in London, which is uh, Perrier water. You have, you have the pink panther walking across the, the desert and goes like this, really heavy body, and arrive, it, there you see the, 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 the water. But the body was very heavy. So you had that. If you ha have very heavy body it, uh, sensations, then it tells you that perhaps your body is very soggy. So spiritually, where am I? Am I lacking in clarity? Can I focus? Uh, am I harboring resentment against my co-workers, my parents, my friends, my husband or my wife? Uh, am I obsessed with my own needs? Uh, so if any of this rings through, and if, uh, take note, do I have circular thought? Am I like a, a dog chasing my own tail, going over the same thing over and over and over again? If that's the case, also take note. We can do something about that. Now, the, the cool thing about saying that my earth element is out of balance is that it's your earth element. You can do something about it, right? It's not me intrinsically. It's my earth element. I can actually act on that. Doesn't that feel empowering? I think so. Okay. Um, the yi. The yi, remember, uh, is the heart space. Learn to declutter. Say goodbye to friends so-called friends that really say goodbye to things, people that no longer, I'm not saying that you should be mercenary about it, but things that kind of a lot of activity with no center, that doesn't serve you. With no center, with no purpose, that doesn't serve you. I once have, uh, now, members of, of the audience, ladies and gentlemen, if you're chronically constipated and nothing ever works, this might be the reason why. I treated a patient when I was still at St. Vincent's Comprehensive Cancer Center. I didn't want to say anything about the cancer center because these are my current patients, so I have to refer to people in the past. Um, she came in with two of her children, a lady, a, a young lady, about 19, and the son about 21. So we were doing a health consult. In the middle of it, she said, you know, I have such constipation. I have this chronic constipation. The doctor's given me this, and I've used this, I've used that. Nothing worked. I eat all the vegetables and food that was recommended to me. I am still constipated. I looked at her, and I say, your house is very cluttered, isn't it? She looked at me, how do you know? I said, well, according to China, so I went and explained to her, and the son and the daughter went like this. <gasps> I am so glad you say that. We have been trying to get her to get rid of things that's been cluttering the bedroom, the sitting room, and you know what? She has a television from the 1960s. We can't get her to get rid of it. So I say to her at the end of the consult, please get rid of some of the things that you've been hoarding for a long time that are no longer useful to you, if you can't bear to part with it, give it to the Salvation Army. At least you think that I'm doing something good, right, instead of throwing it into the bin. So it did ease her constipation because what happened is that you are holding, you really, metaphorically speaking, holding on to the past. What's the work of your uh, large intestine, your gut, is to absorb what is good and get out get rid of what is not good. 
So she's holding on to things and it's translated physically to her. Uh, I'm glad to say that that was a good result from her. It didn't totally get rid of all the constipation, but at least it lightened up the load, so to speak. Okay, uh, on to the food. So we talk about, in Chinese medicine, we talk about uh, the upper burner, which is from the diaphragm up. Can you see me? That's your upper burner. And your middle burner is from your belly button to the diaphragm. And the lower burner is from the belly button to the pelvis, to the, to the pelvic area. Um, so when we talk about harmonizing your center, I'm really talking about here to here. What is very good for that is root vegetables. Uh, slightly, vegetables that are slightly sweet. Go to the farmer's market, uh, you will see uh, I think the beets are out of season now, but carrots, uh, turnips, cantaloupe, parsnips, yams, all the ingredients that make a very yummy, yummy, yummy uh, root chicken vegetable soups. They are delicious. And people say, well, aren't they fattening? Not at all, because it is about portion control. Don't go and eat and eat until you can't stand up. Uh, just eat what you need. And these are very delicious food. It's got lots of good stuff in there, and they are not at all uh, fattening. If you eat nothing else but uh, yams and potatoes, then I would say it is fattening. But if you use it in conjunction with other stuff, it is not. It is very nourishing. It's great to harmonize your center. It's very kind to your digestive system. Now, doesn't that look yummy? Yes, it is. And here are some root vegetables for you to ponder over, as well as some leeks and parsley. Okay, I'm going to pass around some, uh, I have three little bags, please pass around and you will see the slide. Um, this is the first one is rate dates. It's coming around. It's three little tiny bags. Um, I use a lot of this in Chinese, uh, in my practice here at the cancer center. I do recommend a lot of what I call the yin nourishing soups, chicken herbal soups. Um, a lot of my patients, uh, because of chemotherapy and radiation, uh, are very yin deficient. Yin deficient meaning they're, they're, they're very dry, um, very thirsty, and drinking water doesn't help that. So we use that a lot in soups. We seldom use, eat it like this. Uh, this belongs to the category tonify the qi uh, herb. In Chinese herbal medicine, anything, anything that tastes good, we use it as food. So this is a very uh, common uh, Chinese herbs that is used as food. I use this, my mother cooked this when I was growing up, uh, always put in soups. Um, this is rate dates, rate dates. Uh, in Chinese it's da jiao, da jiao, D-A-Z-A-O, rate dates. It's written in the, in the handout. Um, this is one of my favorite uh, food herb to use. It's yi yi ren, it's uh, Job's tears, Siemens quasis in, in uh, but anyway, this is yi yi ren and I use it a lot. It comes under the category herbs that drain damp. Do you remember all the pictures the picture I show you, that damp, wet ground. 
So if you have a tongue that is puffy and soggy and pale, uh, and I will probably say to you, get some of this and boil. And if you are one of those with some uh, problems with guts, that you've been advised not to eat high roughage things, you may just boil it and drink the water. But otherwise, you can cook this. It's delicious. You can cook it into the consistency of porridge or oatmeal uh, and eat it with honey. Or you can make it make a mushroom and, and yi and soup. It's very, very nice. Uh, Y-I-Y-I-R-E. You should get a pack. For those of you who didn't get a pack, uh, Danielle will give you a pack later. It's in the handout. That, so it's Y I Y I R E N. Yes, it's up there. Okay. Um, this is Chen Pi. It's dried tangerine peels. We use this a lot in, in soups. I'm sure. Many of you have been to Chinese restaurants. General Tso's chicken? Yes. <laughs> That's right. It has chen pi in it, a lot of it. And we use this to dry damp. And this comes under the herbal medicine category, herbs that regulate qi. Uh, we also use it a lot for in essential, essential oil, red, red peel and uh, green tangerine peel. I use that a lot in my clinical practice. For people who are very stressed and tense, it really is fantastic. I love it. It's a fantastic smell. And this I use in soups and in cooking beans uh, a lot. Uh, it tastes good. You can eat it. And if you order general sauce or sauce uh, chicken again, you can taste a little bit of this chun pi. Don't toss it out. It's really quite nice. And I use it kind of almost on a daily basis to cook. But don't overdo it. Remember, balance is now your middle name. OK, while we are on the topic of food, so remember, when you eat, uh, you cook, you go home, you cook yourself this delicious uh, root chicken vegetables. Don't eat the whole pot. Uh, food should be a gift to all our senses. When you cook, make sure you present it nicely. So a gift to your eyes. Uh, when you cook, you have a nice smell wafting out from the kitchen. So it's a gift to your nose. Uh, for those of you who frequent Chinese restaurants, how many times have you been given soggy vegetables? I say almost never. Because crunchiness is a very important quality in Chinese cooking. Because if you don't crunch, you don't hear. When you don't hear, you don't quite enjoy your food as much. There was a study in England. In England, they call... Uh, they call it chips here, right? Potato chips. In England, it's crisps. And for those people who can't hear the crisps crunching, they don't enjoy it so much. Anyway, food should also taste good. And most important, not most, but equally important, it should nurture our body, our mind, and all our senses as well as our soul. So food is very important. Uh, so pamper your digestive system from now on. So to get optimum health, make sure you eat mindfully. Don't inhale your food. Don't sit in front of a TV. So because I want you to eat and enjoy, hear the crunch. Look at how beautiful the yellow color, all in orange color is. Uh, taste it, the t uh, feel the texture, the taste of, the, of your carrots or your turnips or your parsnips. Eat up to 80% full. Don't stuff yourself so that you can't move. 80% full is good. 
I used to have an exercise which is called a one bowl meditation uh, eating. So you have one bowl, this size, not this size. <laughs> Just like when I say to people, all you need is a meat per day is the size of your palm. Okay, but not that big, okay? So the bowl, not that big, but this size bowl. You can fill your bowl up with whatever you want, but you are not allowed to go back for seconds. That is your 80% full. You, your stomach can be trained to expect less, and when you chew slowly, when you eat whole food rather than refined food, <coughs> sooner or later you will train your stomach to love those food and look at highly refined foods as, oh, stay away from me, or I'm going to stay away from you. All right, one thing for a few more slides. I'm running out of time. Uh, this is about three fingers below your knee is the earth point of the earth meridian, and we call it stomach 36. It's indicated for people with digestive issues, uh, poor appetite, nausea. We use that a lot. Uh, it also uh, really the points we use a lot. Uh, you can press it. I'll show you in the next picture how to do that. If you can find it, uh, once in a while, press that. In fact, uh, I would love to mock uh, this point for people who have, uh, when I palpate their stomach and the stomach feels cold, I would love to mock uh, this point, but as I was telling my previous other talks, that, you know, in the hospital, when you burn mock it smell, if you don't, I don't know what marijuana smell like because I've never used it myself, but apparently it smells like marijuana. And people, I burn it once in another place I work. They say, what are you doing, Wei Tai? I said, well, I'm burning moxa. What are you? People, patients were complaining because when you have uh, nausea, chemo-related nausea, anything can set it off, which I can totally understand. And the patients who are receiving the moxa loves it. So I eventually have to abandon it because the smells are too strong. It goes through the corridor and everybody who's not at the receiving end complain. So, oh uh, well, bye-bye, Moxa. Okay, optimum health, mind, body, and spirit. Uh, I often tell my patient to take a walk in the park, commune with nature, and that includes lying on the ground to really touch base, touch the earth, Look up into the sky and you see the clouds, the clouds and the wind that belongs to your liver, uh, the Chinese liver, okay? Uh, not the Western liver. Um, and to do simple breath work, there's lots of Qigong exercise that help to center your, um, help to center you and harmonize your middle. Uh, engage in things that is meaningful to you. Don't, like I say, do lots of things, have lots of activities, but no center. Uh, be mindful of what goes in in your head. I'm very careful what goes in in my mouth, what I eat. I'm also very careful what goes in in my head. Sometimes when I have uh, not very nice thoughts, I do indulge a little bit, and then I thought, okay, now you can go. The important thing is not to let it sit and fester and become your kind of your companion. Long-term strategy from the I Ching, which I think is fantastic. In Chinese medicine, we talk about uh, your destiny, meaning living the life according to your blueprint. It's like building a house. The architect has drawn a blueprint for your home, and if you build your house not according to that blueprint, the house will fall down fairly soon. So if you live your life, if you don't know yourself, what makes you take, and, and you're not happy, generally means you're really perhaps not living according to your blueprint. So time to think about who I am. Very difficult question to ask. And with that, I'm going to leave you that question to ponder, 
who, who am I? Thank you.